Hello and welcome to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Today we'll be speaking with a council member representing the 9th District of Long Beach, and he's someone who's special to us here at Long Beach Community Action Partnership because now our offices, as of April 2015, are located in the 9th District. Please help me in welcoming Councilman Rex Richardson. Welcome, Councilman. Thank you, Derek. I'm happy to be here. Yes, we're happy to be up here. It's been different for us being in the 9th, and uh, since I've been up here, I drive through the district, mm -hmm. and I'm reminded of just how much change is going yeah. on, and I'm yeah. sure you're real proud of that. Yeah, we but certainly are. Let's uh, start out about uh, you, you come into your position. Mm -hmm. It wasn't totally new to you because no. you were chief of staff. You kind of knew what was going on. Absolutely. But how has that transition been for you going from being on staff to actually being the person responsible for it all? Well, I, it, I believe that uh, the time I spent working for the city as chief of staff for our previous mm -hmm. council member, Steve Neal, mm -hmm. it was a period of preparation for me. I was able to build relationships with community members, stakeholders, understand the complex issues and use that as a basis, basis to create uh, a platform and a policy agenda. Uh, if I had not had those years of experience, I probably would have spent you know, the first year, 18 months, just getting up to speed on things, mm -hmm. whereas we were able to pick right up and sort mm -hmm. of uh, take things to the next level right out the gate. Mm -hmm. and, and you still have some of the same faces in that office working with you with a complement of new faces as well, right? Absolutely, certainly. So yeah. uh, I, obviously I'm, I'm still in the office. <laughs> right. We kept uh, uh, our field deputy. She's now in the office manager role, Marina. Mm -hmm. Many people like uh, know, know Marina. Right. My chief of staff, Shauna Stevens, she worked in, she, was, she began as an intern with the city three, council, three generations of council members ago for Jerry Schultz. Then she worked wow. 10 years in our health department managed a large grant here in District 9 for the, for, from Kaiser Permanente mm -hmm. that focuses on healthy eating, active living. So having given her experience and my relationship with her working together in these neighborhoods, mm -hmm. I thought she made the, the most sense to sort of uh, come over and lead our team as the chief of staff. Uh, so there, there's right. that. A lot of the residents are still the same in our business district, which, which began uh, in 2014. Um, in 2013, that's still here as a part of our team as well. Now, when you look at your, your campaign and you reflect on commitments made then based on what you knew uh, you could accomplish and the reality today, uh, what are some of those commitments that you're proud of that are starting to come to fruition? So here's what I've learned. Uh, you know, uh, neighborhoods, communities aren't made up of buildings or structures or potholes. At its core, neighborhoods are made up of people. Communities are made up of people. Mm -hmm. And when the people are, you know, thrive, the community thrives. When the people suffer, the community suffers. Right. So the, the commitments that we made is that, um, yeah, sure, we're going we're gonna to make investments in our infrastructure. We're going to go ahead and uh, build and, and focus on our aging infrastructure. But really, we're, in order to really make a change in this community, we have to uh, really be about community empowerment, empowering the people of the community. So we did that. We, uh, we started off um, having seen the excitement that's grown in the community, going from four or five neighborhood associations to 10 or 11. Wow. And we have more active neighborhood groups uh, representing every inch of our council district more than any other council district in our city now, mm -hmm. right? So we've taken that, built on that, and spun it into a, a tremendous new uh, uh, part of democracy called participatory budgeting, which right. is when we take a portion of a public budget, hand it to the residents and say, you write the rules, you determine what your priorities are as a community, then you take a public, direct, democratic vote on how those funds are spent. Now, we were the first community in Southern California to host this. It was wildly successful. We were able to actually uh, have the highest vote turnout of any participatory budgeting process in North America. Wow. Now, if you compare that to where North Long Beach was five or six years ago in terms of engagement, three or four neighborhood associations, a few quasi-governmental North PAC groups, now you have real meaningful engagement here in North Long Beach. So we can build libraries and build community centers and all that, but really, it's the people. We have to build a renaissance in the people. Now, if we could go back to that participatory uh, budgeting, because there were some specific things that people actually Certainly. voted on. Certainly. Would you care to share? Absolutely. A bit more so there about were that? there were you know there were hundreds of ideas that were submitted. Right. 
The residents created budget delegates who crafted those ideas into concrete proposals, wow. vetted them through the city's process, and placed, I believe, about 13, 11 or 13 projects on a ballot. Mm -hmm. Three pod projects uh, won and were funded. And those projects were a digital marquee, a community information board right. to be placed somewhere on either Jordan's campus or Houghton Park's campus, somewhere on that complex mm -hmm. to help share information with the community. That was really important. Secondly, improved lighting at DeForest Park. Our city's going citywide and LED and it's a major emphasis on lighting and this is one of our most important parks. So that, that actually won as well. And then finally, um, improved security on our corridors by installing cameras at key in intersections on the Atlantic Corridor. Mm -hmm. the, that camera project has allowed us to, uh, to go ahead and imagine what else we can do on that corridor. So we're actually upgrading <coughs> those cameras to emit a Wi-Fi signal. Now, here in North Long Beach on the Atlantic Corridor, uh, very soon we're going to be able to claim that we're the only corridor in Long Beach to have publicly accessible Wi-Fi in the public space. So, so th these ideas, these innovations, came from the residents. That's meaningful engagement, that's empowerment. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned that jump too in community or neighborhood organizations mm -hmm. from what, five to 10 or? Yeah, neighborhood associations. Right. Originally there were about four or five. We've got, you know, b between 11 and 13 associations <coughs> that are active. In addition to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, businesses and nonprofits and new, new business district that's here in the area. So it's really been an explosion in civic engagement here. We have great partners now like LBCAP here in the area. Our new uptown business district has uh, two staff people now. And right. a few years ago, I was the only guy right. and I didn't even work for them. Right. And uh, so really, there's been a, a real uh, explosion in terms of synergy here in North Long Beach. And we're really excited about it. Now. There's lots that we haven't even talked about yet, but as you're thinking about those accomplishments that have occurred to date, sure. Is there any one particular one that Absolutely. you just stand out? Sure. So, so the, we've got a regional park here in North Long Beach, the Houghton Park Regional Center. So, the thing about that's different about a regional community center and a regular park community center is that a regional center offers additional extend, expanded programs and services. For example. Houghton Park has a senior center and right. it has a teen center. Right. Other parks do not have a teen center and a, and a senior center. That said, this park is one of the most utilized parks in our city. It serves wow. over 100,000 people in its service area and, it, uh, and it's been standing since, since the early 1920s. So this park, is not, this community center is 90 years old. 100,000? Seriously, 100,000 oh. people in their service area. Wow. So, so consider this. A 90-year-old building where Jordan High School had its first graduation still stands today. We still use that for the after-school program today. It's shameful that, we're still keep, that we haven't maintained this. Mm -hmm. Given its historic significance in our community, we haven't maintained it over the last 90 years. So I'm proud that, uh, to say that in the 18 months since we've taken, we, since we've taken office, We've take, taken this discussion about the Houghton Park Community Center from a concept to reality. We've uh, gone ahead and, and uh, uh, have engaged in a process to design a brand new state-of-the-art LEED certified uh, community center mm -hmm. to be placed uh, at that site. We're going to retain the historic elements of the old clubhouse and restore it. And now uh, you will have an expand, expanded programming space, a basketball gym, uh, a number of amenities for this new larger community that we have. Mm -hmm. Now, it, we've gotten to this point in approximately two years. It took us about 10 years to get to this point with our new library. Mm -hmm. So to put that in perspective, what took us 10 years to achieve with our library, we've achieved in two, in two right? Yeah. So that's something we're really, really proud of. Mm -hmm. And just mentioning our, our library, that's been a decade in the making. Right. We finally, due to the good work of previous councils and previous mayors, we were in a position, and when I took office, we finally broke ground on that. And we're glad to see that it's progressing. We haven't had any work stop issue, stoppage issues, any budgeting issues. Mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're doing great work, and now we anticipate uh, opening this new library in this summer. We just went through a, a very broad process here where we have uh, we went to the community and and uh, youth have proposed the name for this library. I thought it was a brilliant idea. And this will be the Michelle Obama Neighborhood Library. This will be right. the only library 
in our nation to bear our First Lady's name. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so we're really excited and we're going to be extending a, an invitation to the First Lady to come visit our library sometime uh, in the last six months of this year. Uh, that's incredible. And, and you also, so we know that the library will open in the summer of 2016. What about the park facility? When, when do you envision that being available? So we did a, an expanded master plan for our, our park, uh, our, our facilities around the community center. That we're going to begin implementation this summer. So you'll be able to start seeing actual construction on the grounds this summer. The community center itself will have to go through a period of entitlements and, and environmental right. review. Right. That, will take, that will make it shovel ready by fall of 2017. So mm-hmm. fall of 2017, we'll be in a position to be shovel ready which means we're in a position to draw down uh, much needed resources from the county, from the state, or even here locally to make sure we have the resources to complete this, this building. Now, I know that there's also a major uh, investment in Jordan High School, which is right next door. How will those two complement each other? If you think about it, this is some of the largest public investment in North Long Beach in the yeah. establishment of it's North Long to be, Beach. Yeah. $130 million investment into Jordan High School. Uh, uh, upwards of $20 million investment into the Houghton Park Community Center with another two, two to five million into the grounds itself. Uh, our new North Neighborhood Library, a $17 million investment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have private investment coming in that could, that could easily be 60 to 70 million of investment, um, private investment taking place on the corridor. All of that together packed into one corridor, that allows you to think about how are we being a catalyst for a larger change, a larger renaissance for our community. Where's the pl- where is the place in North Long Beach where you bump into somebody and, and, uh, and, and you exchange with a neighbor? Where's the center? Where's the main street? Right. Well, we haven't had that. Right. Now, with these investments, Atlantic becomes our main street for North Long Beach. Atlantic becomes the place where you bump into Derek, uh, mm-hmm. Derek Simpson at, uh, at lunch, right? Mm-hmm. This is the place where you can bump into a neighbor or have a conversation or exchange. You, you mentioned quite a few exciting things. We're close to our, our first break. Sure. When we come back, uh, we're going to continue our conversation with Councilman uh, Rex Richardson of the 9th District. We will continue to find out all the exciting things that he has going on currently and what he plans to do in the future. Please stay tuned for more of Long Beach Lens. very pet friendly. Everybody has a dog in Long Beach. It's Dog City. Well, there's everything to do here. You got the Pike, you got Queen Mary, you got the beaches, you got paddle boarding, surfing. You go half a mile that way, you got surfing, got downtown. I just think it's the most most incredible, most beautiful, most unique city, which has so much to offer. So I love it here and I'll never leave. They have a offered me opportunities. They allow me to utilize equipment that they have. I get to practice more so than I would with the supplies that I have, with the equipment that I have. Uh, I'm learning how to work again with more people and how to actually work in the actual studio and working with the cameras and hands-on. I remember they said like LAMP as in leadership. You know, I learned a little bit about how to become a leader as well as like, you know, communicating with the people I work around with. You know, after being here, you know, all the teaching, all the skills I've been learning, it, you know, it became easy. It's like learning the alphabet. And from like, you know, we start from the bottom and then we go up. We start learning all these new skills. Things that we thought that it was, you know, really hard becomes easy. Welcome back, I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson. Joining us in Long Beach is Councilman Rex Richardson, and we've been talking about many different successes Mm -hmm. in the 9th District, and we mentioned the Atlantic Corridor, everything from cameras to now Mm Wi-Fi to what's going on at Houghton Park and with Jordan and the major investments, but uh, take us a little bit deeper into what's happening with corridors, both there and otherwise. Great, so so you're right. We've made real investments into Atlantic, we're continuing to make investments into an Atlantic. But the question is, like, where is our public living room, 
right? I, I, and I borrow this term from our vice mayor, Suja Lowenthal. Where's our public living room, right? And Atlantic clearly, sh it, you know, is a corridor that's designed or should be designed to be that space. But there are other important corridors that we have. For example, the Artesia corridor runs from the boundary of unincorporated Rancho Dominguez and the city of Compton all the way straight through to, to, to the city of Bellflower. It is about three and a half mile stretch of Long Beach, but it's tremendously important because from, it essentially takes you from the Alameda corridor to the 605 corridor, right? right? It's a, a lot of people use it as an alternative to the 91 freeway, right. and Long Beach's portion is one of the most important portions. So it's the largest. So what we've done is, considering the significance of Artesia and how there hasn't really been real investment to make it pedestrian friendly and walkable and inviting, we went to our Gateway Cities Council of Governments and we proposed to create a six city strategy for Artesia Boulevard from Compton all the way out to Cerritos. Wow. And so uh, we've, that study has commenced, it's been funded. Uh, by, the, uh, by, by summer, we should start begin to see some of the results of this study that will show us what it will actually cost and put us in position to actually do a multi-city improvement to the Artesia, Artesia Corridor. Mm -hmm. Now, we've, in anticipation of com completing this, we applied to, to MTA for a, uh, a grant to begin uh, a phase one of this project. And I'm glad to say that we were selected to receive a $4.7 million, $4 million grant for phase one of what we're calling the Artesia Boulevard Great Boulevard, the Great Artesia Boulevard, right. right, project. So this is gonna be, uh, have, have like deep, deep infrastructure improvements uh, for bikeability, drivability, signalized, uh, synchronized trans, right. uh, traffic signals, and all those things. So this is something that's really important for North Long Beach, but really it demonstrates North Long Beach's importance in the region. Right, it does, and, and when you think about it, North Long Beach just geographically is touching many other cities, unlike any other portion of this city, when you look at where Think, it's think about situated. it, we border Compton, Bellflower, Lakewood, Paramount, right. and Rancho Dominguez, right. right? And a portion of a portion of us on the south side borders Carson, right. the city of Carson, yeah. so. Yeah, very unique, and, and I know how proud you are. I mean, I've known you for a couple of years sure. now, and I know how proud you are of the North uh, District and, and how much you have done personally, both behind the scenes and now in front of the scenes to make all this happen. And I know as much as your vision and leadership has, has taken us there, collaboration has been a big piece of this. You just Absolutely. talked about the other cities, but mm -hmm. from, a, a, from a nonprofit perspective with these collaborations or a community perspective, mm -hmm. can you speak to the importance of that in addition to what you're doing? Certainly, I mean, there, I, can, I think of two or three uh, important partnerships that we have that are essential to the Uptown Renaissance. So one, our partnership with the new Uptown Business District. Mm -hmm. This is the voice of the property owner in North Long Beach, right? Unless property owners get it and are bought into the Renaissance, mm -hmm. we're going to have a tough time as a city unilaterally uh, pu pushing our community forward, right? We need real partnership and we've, we've achieved that uh, with our Uptown Business District and we look forward to tremendous work there. Secondly, um, you know, if you think about North Long Beach right now, the landmark anchor would be Jordan High School, right? J Jordan High School should be embraced. We should, we should tear down any boundaries people bet see between the high school and the community. It's really one community. And we've tried to do that with a new partnership with our school board member, Megan Kerr. Mm -hmm. And we have an initiative called the Whole Village Initiative. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's, a, it's, it's the premise is the proverb, it takes a village to raise right. a child. Right. And so we've done things like Last year, we put the names of every high school student who graduated from Jordan High and went to a four-year university or the armed forces. We put them on street banners, and District 9 paid for it out of our budget and, and put the names of these, these youth mm -hmm. and the college they're going to or the branches of the military that they're serving in. We put them, for the whole summer, we put them on our street lights, yeah. and people loved it, right? That was a yeah. partnership yeah. to highlight our, our youth. Another one I think of, you know, Long Beach is unique in that we have, we have our own elected city prosecutor. And Doug has been fantastic. And he is, uh, the fact that we have that allows us to treat, we, since we prosecute our own misdemeanors and citations in-house, it allows us to be a little bit more dynamic and innovative and nimble in how we treat certain, certain uh, populations. Right. So 
we, you know, we proposed at city council uh, a new program called PATH, Promising Adults Tomorrow's Hope. And essentially, we're asking for a developmentally sensitive approach to prosecution that says, our brains aren't fully developed till you're 26, so why are we prosecuting young adults as full adults when you know they're adolescents, mm -hmm. right? So this new proposal and this new pilot program, if you're between 18 and you know, 25 years old and you uh, make a mistake and a case ends up on our prosecutor's desk, that prosecutor will offer you, uh, you know, in certain cases will offer you a workforce opportunity or an education opportunity. And if you complete those opportunities, you, that f charge will never be filed against you. Consider if we, you know, if we told a young person who's disconnected, doesn't have a job, out of school, that if you complete a semester at community college here at Long Beach City College, then we'll give you a second chance, right? Because right? we, all, we all make mistakes. Right. But our job is, is to keep our people in the local community and lose, use the immense resources we have in our community mm -hmm. to help make sure that our kids have the best opportunity to really turn their lives around and get on the right track. And, and speaking of that, I know that you've also been very active in the whole uh, My Brother's Keeper initiative, which President Obama launched. Would you care to say a bit about your role in that and what you see for that going forward? Sure. So, so yeah, I'm a big fan of our president. I was really inspired by, you know, uh, our president. And when, when uh, Trayvon Martin incident happened and the young man was killed in Florida, uh, the president put together a task force in Washington, D.C., and put together, uh, created the My Brother's Keeper initiative. Modeled after that, about a year later, he challenged local communities to do the same, appoint a task force in local communities and to create an action plan to improve conditions for boys and young men of, young men of color. So when that challenge went out, I, I actually was able to hear the president live uh, I was in Washington, D.C., and I was moved by that, and I came home and made a motion at City Council that the city of Long Beach also participate in this My Brother's Keeper Challenge. So here we are about a year later. We've gone through that process, mm -hmm. and we are now one of the only cities in Southern California that are participating in all six milestones that cover a full course of development right. from birth to you know, early childhood education all the way through to college and career. Right, yeah. we're one of the only cities that engages in all six milestones. It's something we're really proud of. It couldn't happen if we didn't have, again, a strong partnership right. with Long Beach Unified School District, with Cal State <laughs> Long Beach, with Long Beach City College, with our nonprofit mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have those partnerships, we wouldn't be in a position to put forth such a comprehensive uh, plan for My Brother's Keeper. So we have about four minutes or so sure. left, and I want to touch on a few other things. If we come up out of the Ninth District for a moment sure. and talk about the work and relationship on the council sure. and with the mayor, sure. how would you describe that right now? Yeah, I would say I would say that you know having this is an interesting question. So <laughs> having served uh, as a chief of staff and watching uh, the last council and then serving on this council, I would say that um, this you know. Uh, the voters were very intentional in sending a, a diverse and yet much younger group of council members and a much, a much younger mayor to city council. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to say what they, you know, what they intended, but, but when you have three millennials and three Gen Xers on the council, mm -hmm. uh, certain, things, certain discussions are going to happen. Right. Right? If, I, if I were to have a conversation with an architect or an engineer, I'm going to have one conversation. But if you have two architects having a conversation, they're going to have a conversation that we, everybody might not understand. Right, exactly. I think that, that's called synergy, mm -hmm. right? There are certain synergies on this council right now that, we, that the city just hasn't seen before, mm -hmm. where there's conversations about um, technology and innovation, conversations about you know, partnership and leading the nation on social justice issues like human trafficking and mm -hmm. uh, support for boys and young men of color. Right. As a young African-American man, I, re I represent a very diverse district, mm -hmm. but there is a perspective that I offer that's never really been on the city council before. Right. We've never had a black man under 40 on the city council. and I was elected at 30. Mm -hmm. Right. So so that's just something to consider these new perspectives mm -hmm. that are here. And I honestly believe that it's good. It's very good to have diversity and respect and and equity on the city council where everyone from every part of town can sort of see themselves reflected in that in that council. And I think that's probably a great contributor to 
the way the Ninth District has risen up to be supportive of you because they see you welcoming them in, in that regard. If I may ask one other question, sure. then, when you look at then your vision for the Ninth District going forward, sure. you've accomplished so much. Uh, what's next that you see in, let's say, 2016? There's so much to do. There's so much to do. We're going we're gonna to open our new library. We're going to invite our first lady and see if she'll, see, see if she'll come out but I'm not gonna do it alone. We didn't name this library, we didn't build this library alone. I'm gonna be calling on the youth of North Long Beach to, uh, to, to answer a challenge. And that challenge is within the first 100 days of the library opening, I want to double the, particip the actual number of items checked out in our mm -hmm. library. So I'm, gonna, I'm putting a challenge out to check out 25,000 items out of our mm -hmm. library in the first 100 days. So I'm going to do this in partnership with our schools and others, and we don't know we're going to call it. I like the Read with Rex challenge, but that seems, you <laughs> okay. know, maybe we'll call it something else. Okay. But literally, you, young people, we're going to challenge them to get their library cards in advance. We're going to spend the next, you know, four to six months collecting pledges, and we're going to get these kids to, to go ahead and do that. We're going to maintain our focus on infrastructure. Um, you know, a ballot initiative, was the city council just voted on a ballot initiative, take it to the ballot. Um, for voters to help decide what, you know, what kind of future they want to have, because the truth is we need to continue investing in infrastructure. You know, Councilman, we we're out of time, and, Great. and we still have a lot more that I'd love to ask you. I'll come back anytime, Derek. We we love what you're doing. We love your energy and your vision because we can see what it's doing in this community, and it makes a big difference. And anything we can do here at Patnet or LB Cap, we really want to be on the team and help you make it come to fruition. You guys are doing amazing work. Thank you. That concludes our show. I'd like to thank Councilman Rex Richardson for joining us today. Be sure to follow Padnet TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates. This show has been brought to you with the support from the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Thank you for watching Long Beach Lens.